Hey there, extraordinary treasurers. Isn't it incredible how much has changed just in our lifetime? My dad was the treasurer of our little church in Paris, Texas, back in the 60s. And this is what he used to count the offering. So he could write the numbers in that gigantic ledger book with columns and columns. Back then it was all on paper. And when your church changed to a new treasurer, you just handed them the big book and you were ready to go. Fast forward, home computers, email, jewel, online banking, Adventist giving, local payroll, ACH, automatic bill pay, passwords, secret questions. If you wonder why I call our treasures extraordinary, this is why. Being a treasure today is very different than it was in the 60s, and it calls for a whole new set of tools. Front and center in our toolbox today is the treasury computer, usually a laptop. What would we do without them? Georgia Cumberland Conference asks that churches purchase a computer exclusively for treasury use. When treasurers use their own personal computer, there's more likely to be security issues and the possibility of data loss. Plus, transitions to new treasurers are more difficult. Whereas if there's a designated church laptop, when treasurer change happens, the church laptop can just be handed over to the new treasurer. So let's assume that your church has a treasury laptop. Now, I hope I don't need to say this, but although this computer is in your sole possession, the treasury laptop is not your personal machine. It's not for family members to borrow. It's not for you to keep track of your personal finances and emails, not to play games or load your own programs, not to watch movies or download music or surf the internet not even to trade back and forth every week between the church clerk and the audiovisual department. It is church property to use for church treasury purposes only. It has private personal information on it and must be protected. I once cleaned up a treasury computer that still had personal banking information from the previous treasurer. They had set it up as their own personal device with personal records and emails and passwords and everything. It had Jewel on it, but other than that, I would never have known it was a church computer. That would kind of like you being voted in to church office and getting a church key for the first time. And the next thing you know, you move in and start sleeping in one of the Sabbath school rooms and eating from the fellowship hall, fridge, and pantry, or borrowing the church mower to mow your own lawn. We wouldn't think of doing that. So why would we assume that the treasury computer is for our own personal use? We recommend that at a minimum, the computer or jewel be password protected. Both is even better, even if you're the only one who uses it. If you need help setting that up, let me know. Computers don't last forever. They get old and sluggish and USB ports quit working and space bars quit working. Using the treasury computer only for treasury use lowers wear and tear it lessens the chance of data loss through theft or damage to the computer, and also lowers the chance of computer virus, malware, and spyware issues. But eventually, even well cared for computers need to be replaced. If you reach that point with your treasury computer and your church board has authorized a new one, and your idea of a good time is not computer shopping, contact me. I can order a new laptop and set it up for your church load up your Jewel database and ship it to you for no more than you might pay locally, which saves you the hassle of setting it up. Or if you love to computer shop and want to find one on your own, contact me and I'll send you a list of specifications that we have found helpful so you have a place to start. I also recommend some sort of padded carrying case to protect it so you can take it to board meetings to answer questions. Speaking of protection, if you're only online a few minutes a month, sending and receiving remittance reports and backups and going to Adventist giving, your risk will be limited, but you still need antivirus protection. I recommend the Windows antivirus program that's free and comes loaded on your computer. It's what I've used for years on my personal computers, and I recommend using it instead of spending money each year on a virus software program for the Treasury computer. In addition, a few of the virus software programs that you can buy actually interfere with Jewel. 
I once drove 90 minutes each way to help a treasure when Jewel suddenly refused to open. Come to find out, a helpful neighbor had come over and helped them to load an antivirus program. Now this treasure was using her personal computer. And it had identified Jewel as a danger and had blocked it. I'm not sure if your computer is being protected and if you're not sure, contact me and I can help you take a look. One more thing, a huge part of protecting your church's information is to back up at the end of each month. Not only to your USB drive, but when Jewel says, send backup to conference. This is actually backing up on a Jewel server. No one in the conference office has access to it, but if your computer crashes or the building where the computer is housed burns down, having an off-site backup can keep you from catastrophic data loss. You'll need to be connected to the internet each month when you close to do it, but it's one of the most important things you can do to preserve your church's financial information. So make sure that it is done every, every, every month. Passwords and usernames have become a necessary headache in today's world. In the next video, we're going to give you some tips to hopefully make it easier. See you there.